Good evening lovely folks, thanks so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate all of you who take the time out of your days or while you're stitching away to pop on the video. And I wanted to give a special shout out to a few folks, um, particularly those who've yeah, provided some really lovely comments after my last video sharing a bit of the, the misadventures of our Monday here. So a special shout out to the lovely Leanne from Leanne's Crafty Cupboard. She always makes me laugh with her comments as well. Um, beautiful Giuzzi from Italy, Corinne from Corinne's, let me just get um, Corinne's channel. It's a long channel, Corinne. It is To Be Loved, sorry, view channel, To Be Loved, Treasures by Corinne, To Be Loved, Treasures by Corinne. So yeah, Corinne always makes me laugh as well with her videos and sweet comments. And then Patricia left just the sweetest little message um, saying that she finds my videos really comforting and like a little virtual stitching circle for her. So that just that comment really made me smile. So thank you, Patricia, for that. Lovely Lorna and lovely Barbara Ann from Canada. So I hope I got all of those right. But thank you again to everyone who's watching. That was just a few little little shout outs to start this video. So I thought I'd just pop back on. Um, we assembled, we did some stitching on our bees on this piece in the last video and then assembled this um, outer collage, fabric collage using some Bonheur de Jour by French General um, little fabric mini charm squares. I ended up switching a few of them out because I realized I'd picked some repeating designs just in the sort of reversed colors and I didn't want to have any of the same designs repeating across so I switched this one and this one Still kept the same um, sort of colour combos, but just selected a different design. I've added um, two buttons. This one is just the most fascinating little button. It was from my Nana's button collection. And I think it's probably carved out of shell. It's got like a little concave, convex, concave, concave surface, I think it is. Um, and it's got these tiny little... They almost look like honeycomb sort of structure, but it would be probably the structure of either a bone or shell. So really interesting. And then this is just a cute little um, flower button. So I'm gonna do my best to keep my volume up with my voice because I know some people are still struggling with the sound quality. It's possibly also my, my recording device, which is my iPhone might not be capturing the sound that well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a microphone or anything um, to add to it, so we'll just have to see how we go. Now, what I'm doing is I'm now gonna do some stitching around the outside fabric pieces, which I just stitched down with a sort of a running stitch. Oops, I haven't even cut that one off. Um, so just sort of tacked it, tacked it down um, with little invisible stitches on the front and the sort of yeah, the longer stitches on the back. And now I've taken some vintage crochet thread and I'm going to just do some seed stitching in this particular square up the top. So let me just try and get it. So you can see it, I've started putting a few stitches in, but I thought, no, I'll turn the, turn the video on um, because as I said in one of my responses to um, one of the comments for me, even just putting the video on and chatting away now, it's become something that's just really soothing. And I do get that feeling that I am in a little, a little stitching circle with my little stitching buddies. Um, in my day-to-day -day real life, um, I don't have many of my friends that are into the crafts. So I don't have any slow stitch um, aficionados amongst my friendship group. So it's been lovely to find the, the virtual community of kindred stitching spirits and I must admit in these sort of yeah in these COVID times it's been yeah nice to form those those virtual connections when it wasn't always possible to to have the, the physical physical connections with people so good news is that my partner has been feeling fine today um, he went out yesterday and got his blood pressure monitor and has been busily um, taking regular readings on that and downloading that to the to the app. Um, there's still been some instances where his blood pressure has gone beyond what the sort of level, the healthy level would be. Um, so he's booked in to go to a doctor as well 
for a further follow-up on Monday next week and then he's got his yeah, stress testing back at the hospital next week booked in also. So determined to get to the bottom of what's what's happening. Hoping I'm not going to make this sort of piece too puckered but I think it's just the nature as you start to put in the seed stitches it will sort of flatten down the piece you're working on but the other bits might pop up a little bit but we'll see how we go. I need to loosen any of the um, invisible stitching I can just sort of cut that away at the back. So seed stitches are pretty simple it's just really that down and, and up you're just creating a little a little dash on the surface and in an, a random pattern you don't have to kind of have it um, in fact the idea is to have it looking looking random you can also use a seed stitch um, I guess to do like a circular pattern or something I saw someone in our Roxy Journal of Stitchery they'd done an amazing sky I think it might have been as part of the volume two the Christmas or winter one um, they'd done a sort of a Van Gogh style sky with all those swirls and just beautiful I do like Van Gogh's work and I love Monet's Monet's work as well. It's fortunate when we were able to freely travel the world um, to yeah, do quite a few trips to, to France and spend quite a good chunk of time in and around Paris and yeah, have done a few trips out to, to Monet's garden, to Giverny. Um, and yeah, the gardens really, they are inspirational. I can see why he created so many of those beautiful water lily images, but also lots of other, other images as well. And the countryside around there is absolutely stunning as well. I've done a bike tour through that, that countryside also. But it's, if you are ever going, it's well worth going early in the day. If, you can, if you're going by public transport, getting the the first bus there so you get a bit of uninterrupted time in the gardens before the before the hordes arrive on the the tour buses etc so we used to um, go traveling to Europe every two years for a big chunk of time sometimes six weeks sometimes two months or even a bit longer um, and before I'd met my partner I'd um, done a lot of travel myself not just in Europe but through Mongolia, Russia, China, Siberia, um, all sorts of out of the way places as well but my partner's a real European aficionado um, and by the time I'd met him I'd also yeah discovered the delights of, of Europe so we've done a lot of a lot of trips there together before the pandemic and then the pandemic put a pretty big stop to it for us um, and it's not something that we're even really wanting to do right now we don't really have the desire to to get on a plane and and go somewhere which is really strange for us because travel was a very big part of our our lives and what we'd talk about and plan so I'd plan the trip sort of nine months or sometimes even almost 12 months out from when we'd be traveling I think I almost started planning some of them just when we'd be on the plane flying back from Europe I'd be already saying to my partner I think the next trip will go to go to Sardinia um, I had lovely times in Italy as well learning Italian first started Italian classes on the island of um, Sardinia in the town of El Guerro um, and then also did Italian classes on the island of Elba, Isola d'Elba, um, which is actually one of my very, very special places. It's a place when I went to in the little town of um, Marciana Marina. I just fell in love with the place. And the first time I was there, um, I was by myself, but I joined up with a yeah the Italian school that operates in the summer um, from a hotel there. Met some lovely girls who were also there studying, studying Italian. We just had the most lovely time traveling around the island and um, trying to learn to speak Italian um, and lots of practice as well and the locals are just absolutely delightful and when it came time to leave um, the island I was sitting on the bus traveling back to the the port town and I was just sobbing and bawling my eyes out and I just couldn't stop and it was the strangest thing I've traveled traveled to other places and you might be a bit sad about about going but I just had this really visceral 
reaction to the experience of leaving this little town of um, Marciana Marina. And so as I was on that bus trip, I vowed that I would definitely be back the next year. And I did. I think it was actually a short while after I'd met, um, met Alex. Um, but I had my trip planned and I was definitely going to go on it. I was a, um, I was quite an independent and I still am a very independent soul as well. And so, yeah, I went on, went on my trip and returned to my little town of Marciana Marina and I just fell even more in love with it. And then the next year I took Alex there and we've been back multiple times to Marciana Marina. I can't even count exactly how many times we've been there. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a tiny little, small little seaside town, not tiny, but small. Um, but the last time we went to Isla de Elba, we were just, we were a bit um, blindsided, I think, because we arrived at the, the ferry port to catch the ferry over with our car um, from the mainland to the island. And there was this massive traffic jam leading down to the port. We hadn't even kind of got anywhere remotely near the port and we were just stuck in, in traffic. And we naively assumed there must have been an accident or something. Um, and so we're sitting there for, I think it was hours, hours on end, only inching forward the tiniest amount. Anyway, we eventually got down to the port and I went into the port building to to buy our tickets across to the, the island because normally you just get there and there's so many different um, ferry companies running. You just go to the window that's up with the ferry that's leaving next or whatever time you want. And then you go down and drive your car onto the ferry and it's all very straightforward. Anyway, we get there and I'm looking around the windows and there's none showing availability for any ferries until like hours and hours later. And it turns out that there's been some sort of major increase in tourist traffic to the island. We later heard that there'd been some promotion run across European um, countries. And so I think most of it was um, yeah, European tourist traffic, but it had gone from being um, yeah, a really easy to access island to just being this nightmare of snarling traffic. And then we had the bizarre experience. We, um, my partner drive, when he's in Italy, he drives like an Italian. So my partner's half Italian and half Hungarian. So he's got some of the Italian looks, but he's also got a bit of that Hungarian um, fieriness, I reckon. And so when he's driving, he's got that sort of like, this is my space, I'm holding my space and I'm gonna get myself where I need to, need to go. And so he did that as we were making our way down to the port and cars were trying to um, cut, us, cut, cut in front or push in front. Um, but he held his space and we were lined up for the ferry. Anyway, we were looking across to where another ferry was boarding and these cars were pushing in front of cars that were actually lined up to drive straight up onto the, the ferry. So they were basically coming around these other cars and just cutting, cutting other cars off. And there was this poor final car that had been in line and should have actually gotten onto the ferry, but they ended up being refused because another car had cut in and essentially taken their place. Now this car occupant, um, a lady, was so outraged, she got out of her car. Oh, first no, first what she first did was drove up onto the ramp that they that is the ramp that sort of closes up, I think, to close up the the back of the, the car section of the, the boat. She drove her car up onto the ramp, got out of her car and laid down on the ramp. And this went on, I think, for about like half an hour with the ferry unable to leave, the woman refusing to move. And then I think finally the um, the police or something came down to yeah, to tell her that she had to had to move on. Um, but I mean, it was partially funny, but also a little bit, a little bit, um, yeah, you could feel empathy for the, the poor lady that had just missed out because someone else had just been a bit of a, a bit of a nitwit and taken someone else's, someone else's place. Um, but we managed to board the ferry that we were scheduled to be on and got over to the island, but a lot later, normally we'd get there sort of mid-afternoon. By that time, by the time we got there, it was dark um, and we were absolutely exhausted. 
And I think my poor, poor partner was a little bit, he, he, was, he took the whole thing in his stride. I was a bit more stressed about the whole situation, but he took it all in his stride. Uh, but when he got there, I think he yeah, had a very decent drink of some of our lovely um, liqueurs that we'd, we'd bought over there and were carrying with us. Had to ease his tensions from the day of driving. I'm glad it wasn't me driving. Um, I generally leave the driving up to him in, in Italy. I think you do need that little, I tend to be a much more, um, I'll kind of give way, give way to anyone that needs giving way to, whereas he's got a bit more of that hold, hold his space. Um, which you definitely need to have a pretty high degree of confidence, I think, to be driving in a lot of Italian towns, Amalfi Coast. Um, luckily, we didn't have to drive along much of um, Amalfi Coast, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty hairy there, watching some of the buses make their way down and even buses passing each other on very narrow narrow passageways. Other places are much easier to, to drive. Um, on our last trip, we also yeah, spent time in Puglia, right down the very bottom, and Calabria, um, and then when we were just, and a big chunk of time in Sicily, um, which can get busier in around some of the towns, but out in the, the countryside, it's yeah, a lot quieter. Although even some of the roads to some of the places we stayed, which we like to stay at sort of more, more out of the way places, um, some of the roads into some of those places are pretty hairy and you sort of wonder how you're gonna actually um, make your way past a car if another, another car comes along. So you can see with seed stitch, you, um, <laughs> you don't get much seed stitch done for your, for your time. I can't even see what the time is. We're 16 minutes in and we've done half half a piece, so I doubt we'll be getting all the stitching done on this piece tonight, but I thought I'd pop it on and we might talk some travel. I, I was thinking travel today, I don't know why I was thinking travel. I don't want to jump on a plane right now, but I was just thinking about places we've been and fun times we've had traveling. I think it was actually, I, um, I think Juicy um, prompted me um, when I was thinking about, yeah, the south of Italy. So yeah, Sicily I've been to a few times now. This was Alex's first time in Sicily. So many fascinating sites there. Lots of ancient sites, but also beautiful little beach towns, mountains, hill hilltop villages and things. And always good food and good wine to be had. Okay. So I'll try and do different stitching on the different different pieces. So we might leave this one in a in a moment or so. Just get a bit more get a bit more done on it and then we might do some maybe some canther style stitching on another piece and maybe select a select a different color or we could use this color just use this one up we'll have a look and I suppose with the seed stitch you don't even need to do it over the whole piece you could just sort of have it sweeping down following part of the design I might even do that on this one. I haven't yet worked out how I'm gonna trim around the outside or whether I'll fold the outside over because I don't even know whether it's gonna join into my Roxy Journal stitchery piece or maybe go in something else. Oops, that was a bit of a long stitch. I was looking up at the, the camera to check that I was still on frame and that was definitely a, a very bodgy stitch. So I've just been watching part of um, Corinne's most recent video of her splash of colour down the garden path and she was trialling her magic, I've forgotten what it was called, but essentially a magic thread conditioner that you swipe your thread through and it makes it sort of run nicely and sit nicely on the, on the fabric. So that was interesting to see that being used. I don't have many of those sorts of um, accessories in my, in my kit. I usually just put a bit of hand cream on before I start my stitching because otherwise my hands, for some reason, they're just always dry. 
I think I'm a bit of a religious hand hand washer um, at the best of times and particularly post pandemic I'm always forever forever giving my hands a good wash. So I might just finish this section and we might then call that call that quits on the seed stitching for now and then I can come back and work out do I want to do it on a further part of the piece or do I leave the the further piece sort of un, unseed stitch. I kind of like that it's just over part of the design. Hopefully you can, can see that. So I'll just tie this off at the at the back. But yeah, seed stitch is a nice one to do when you've kind of got a pattern and you can just put little seed stitches around. It will also give you a really nice finish to your fabric and really make, um, if you've got multiple layers, make them all very cohesive. I don't know what we'd like to. I might do a little bit of stitching around the S. Why use this colour or why use a different I might use a different colour just to have contrast between the different colours of the threads um, between sections. So I might use this one. Most of these crochet threads I think are from I think I got them from Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles. Although I do have a lot from op shops as well, but I think these are a recent bag I got from Melody that I packed to take away and they just came back onto my desk when I when I got home from our travels and I haven't actually put anything away because it all time kind of got a bit away from me. Although I must admit that my desk tends to anyway explode <laughs> anytime I'm working on something. It can start niche and then it just gets totally out of control. I found some big rolls of um, variegated crochet cotton as well, just in the hobby, not the hobby store, like the, essentially the $2 discount kind of style store in Bright. Um, so I got this yellow variegated one. It's a massive roll, so I've just wound some of it on. Um, but I think that's gonna be quite nice. Possibly not for this piece. I think it's a little, little bit too bright, but we'll see how we go. So we're gonna do some square round, not square round, but some stitching around the square, if that makes sense. Sometimes I wonder if I make sense. So I'd love to hear what your favourite travel destinations are. Are there any places that have captured your heart in the way that that Isola de Elba and Marciana Marina did for me? There's this most beautiful little um, gelati shop that just happened to be below the apartment where I stayed on my first visit and that I then subsequently um, went back to that same apartment complex on my, my further future visits. Um, and it's run by a man named Dario and he makes the most beautiful um, artisan gelati um, all from natural ingredients so not using sort of concentrated syrups or anything so just the most lovely flavors and always coming up with new flavors um, that he's made and he's the sweetest man because um, when i was there on my first visit i got to know him i'd go in each night and buy myself a, a little um, a copper of a little cup of gelati and then I'd take my little cup of gelati and go and sit on the rocks looking out over the sea to watch the sunset by the the stone tower that sits at the end of the sort of the rocky little rocky peninsula so that was my nightly favorite routine after dinner take get my gelati and go and sit down and watch the sunset and so I got to know him well on the the visit the first time around and then I told him I'll, I'll be back because even though I didn't know at that point until I was actually on the bus and resolved that I would be would be back, I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be back. Um, and then the second time I arrived on the island, a year, year later, headed down to the gelati shop to get my gelati that evening. And as I walk through the door, Dario looks up from his ice cream stand um, in the shop, sees me, and goes, ciao, Christine. 
So he'd remembered my name, remem remembered my face, and just welcomed me like a, an old friend, even though a whole year had elapsed and he'd only met me over the course of sort of a couple of weeks while I was studying Italian on the island. And then every time since, including when I took my, my partner back there and he, my partner was just so amazed, we walked into the shop. Um, and that time it had actually been, had it, no, it had only been a year the first time, but then the subsequent time after that, it was two years, um, walked into the shop and Dario looks up and straight away greets me by name. Um, so such a lovely man, but he keeps telling me, he keeps telling me, I'm, I'm so old, I'm going to, going to have to retire, but I'm like, Dario, please be there the next time I, I come back. Um, he's, he doesn't actually look that old. He's got grandkids, I think. But he's definitely a part of the island. But we're a bit sad the last time we went back, um, there's a chap called Pedro who rents out um, boats for people to, to take out as well as little sun lounges on one of the, the little beaches down the, the foreshore um, of town. And my partner, the first time he came to the island, he saw Pedro sitting in his, um, yeah, sitting in his beach chair, sort of overgrown beard, overgrown hair, um, sort of in his little beach, beach shorts, living a very relaxed lifestyle, including, um, I think on the Sunday, yeah, his parent, Pedro's parents or something, had come down with a big pot of um, pasta, obviously, straight off the stove. Uh, and he's sitting there, Pedro's sitting there having his pasta and his, and his beer and Alex kind of resolved that um, it looked like Pedro had the, the best life, the most relaxed life possible. And so Alex used to like to see Pedro in his, his natural habitat on the island. But the last time we went up back, um, Pedro's boat rental and banana lounge rental has had, yeah, been taken over by someone else and Pedro... Pedro was gone, so it had been taken over by a larger um, rental company that had started up, I think, the previous summer further further down the, the beach. So it was a bit sad that Pedro, Pedro had gone somewhere else. But we think he used to just come to the island to sort of run that in the, in the summer. He wasn't actually an Elba resident um, because he'd come in his little sort of cara, caravan, I think. But possibly maybe he had parents or something something there I'm not sure but it's funny how you kind of get to get to know these little personalities when you stick around in a place um, long enough I certainly the way I do like to travel I don't like to be on the move and um, in our past most recent travels yeah we'd really settled into a routine of going and staying places for two weeks or at a minimum a week and really trying to very much limit those more um, short-term um, stays only if we were really transiting a lot, large distance and just needed to sort of overnight somewhere but generally the, even in that case we'd probably plan to take a few few nights and sort of um, enjoy the area a bit more. And we don't, we're not a big one for staying in hotels, we like to find places, ha um, houses or Parts of houses we can we can rent um, because we do like to still have that option to do a bit of cooking ourselves. I know I like um, going to the markets over there and sourcing sourcing produce. And sometimes you just don't want to have another another restaurant meal out. So as you can see, my stitching is very uneven, but that's the charm of slow stitching. It's not about perfection. You don't want it to look machine stitched and perfect. You can do perfect stitching, that's, um, <laughs> you can, but you don't have to. That's the nice thing. Started out doing um, actual full squares and now I seem to be doing a sort of a winding around narrowing in a square pattern but again anything goes do what your needle wants to do the great thing is you'll have something that no one else has anything exactly like totally unique pieces
So this is, I guess, what you'd call a acanther um, stitch or a, a running running stitch. So just popping up and then down and then leaving a space and then continuing your way around in whatever pattern you want to create. And again, it's a great way to create cohesiveness between layers of fabric, but also create some really lovely texture for you to run your, your finger over. I think these slow stitch pieces are both about what the eye sees, but I think they're very much pieces to touch as well and enjoy, enjoy the textures. And that's why I guess we use threads that are all different sort of weights and things. So you get that, um, you get that pleasurable, yeah, difference in, in texture and feel. So that's the little square with it stitching around it. Happy with that. It's got a bit of a beehive -y look to it. So again, we'll tie that one, tie that one off, and then I might do another, another one, and let's have a think about what we could do that's different type of decorative stitching. So the great thing about this stitching is it's not only um, decorative, but it's also getting our pieces really firmly attached to the to the background. So what will we do? I don't know how these ones are meant to lay like that, I think. Um, and I think I might have added this piece of trim, which I'd, I think I'd shown you it when we were looking through the supplies, but I don't know if I'd added it to the, the piece, and I added this one, this piece of trim as well. Um, what will I do and where will I do it? I'm thinking I might do a little circular pattern on this piece. Maybe I'll actually go circular and go around both of them to kind of integrate the two. So I might take that piece off and what do I want to use? Or do I want to use, was that the one I was using that time? I can't even remember which piece I used last. Maybe I'll use this one. Or would that be a better? I'm just wondering if the the this one might blend in a bit too much. I'm thinking, or do I use something a bit more bold? This is from the Popunka Op Shop, and it's a knitting cotton that was on a big roll that I just wound off some on. Don't even know if this one will fit through the head of this needle, so it could be a problem. But let's see how we go. Let's just do an experiment. Experiments are fun. So I'm going to have to find a bigger, bigger needle, I think. Oh no, definitely that's way too big. No, that's going to be a bit too, like a crowbar, as I think Corinne sometimes describes her needles. I can give that one a go. Definitely a much thicker, um, oh, what well, was called, what was it called? It was called a knitting cotton. So it's not a crochet yarn, it's a knitting cotton. So it's probably actually not meant to be a, a slow stitching. Um, probably more meant to be couched, couched down. But let's just see how it goes. If it's putting too big of a sort of hole in, we'll, we'll switch it up and try something else. I don't even know if I'll be able to get it to do my little knotting method. There we go. Okay, let's see how we go. Oh no, it's going to be hard. I'm going to, I think I'll decide that, that that one can be for couching down. How about we use a piece of this one, which I got from Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaim Textiles as well. Got a bunch of um, her old threads, although these ones don't actually look like they've been used, but possibly her collected, her, from her collection, extensive collection of threads and bits and pieces. So I think, are they all different colours within the individual threads or are they sort of variegated on the threads themselves? Let's have a look. What colour would be good? Maybe that sort of colour. Sort of similar to that grey and yeah, I think that could work. 
Oh no, it definitely changes colour, so it goes from a white to that sort of darker, darker grey, if you can see. Maybe you can't see that well. It is night time as well. Unfortunately, that's when I get the time to, to do my stitching in the evenings. And I always like to do a bit of a mix of um, watching others and stitching and then a bit of time videoing if I can, if I can squeeze it in. And we're all eagerly awaiting the next prompt for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. But normally the videos aren't, aren't out quite yet. So it'll be interesting. In fact, I don't need this big crowbar of a needle. So I'll put that one back away and we might just go back to this. So I'm using all the strands in this thread rather than breaking it down. Because I don't mind, as I sort of said, to have some more textural elements. It will just be a question of, can I... Can I thread my needle in any... Oh, can I just pricked my finger on the needle. Poor Corinne, she was having all sorts of, all sorts of trouble. Um, it's the nature of videoing it, just like everything that will go wrong, will go wrong. But I think her poor thread, her thread, not her poor thread, poor her with thread that was just um, disintegrating in front of her. Definitely, definitely not your technique, Corinne, which is fantastic. It was definitely the materials. So we'll try and make a bit of a, a swirling pattern, I think, whether we will, or whether we'll end up making just a, a random shapey pattern, who knows. Don't know where my needle's actually taking me. Not sure what it's doing. Thought I was going to kind of swirl out from the, the middle, but who knows? Maybe I'm going to just do a little swirl coming in from the, the outside. I'm not sure. Or maybe we're going to do a little circle within circles. I probably should have um, sort of drawn on with my friction marker. Um, what design I wanted to do, but sometimes I like to just see where the needle, see where the needle takes me. Hopefully I'm still um, right up the top of the screen, I think, so I better just bring it down a bit, a bit closer. Okay, so I think we're doing circle within circle, and then we'll go around the outside and do some, some bigger circles. I think once you get your shape established, it's kind of okay. We'll see. And the nice thing about this sort of stitching is you can just pick it up and do a little bit of one section and then you can pick it up another time and um, sort of, yeah, just keep adding, adding as much stitching or as little stitching as you want. Um, if you're not going to do a lot of the, this sort of decorative stitching, then you'll probably need to do some more um, stitching down just to make sure all your pieces are cohesive. So I'll definitely keep going with the with the decorative stitching, even if it's not on not on video. But this can just be a little piece I can work on when I'm not working on the the Roxy prompt that we get for the next two weeks. Depends how big of a prompt as well. I might have some might have some spare time. Corinne's always egging us on to, to take on more projects. So she's starting another project, I think, on Friday um, with Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio. So eager and keen to see what they'll be creating as part of that. Corinne gave me a bit of a hint in the, the comment she left on my, my last video something to do with um, my French general fabric scraps being useful for it so I don't know. Now I don't know what's happened here. Thread has become somehow disjointed from the main thread. I don't know if it's a thread of the threads or another thread caught in it or oops no it's another thread caught in my threads so that was worth fixing up. I'd love to hear what you're working on. We've got some people that are embellishing their pieces at the moment. Always fun embellishing. 
it's fun kind of selecting coming up with the idea and auditioning materials I find um, and it's fun um, as you start to see the piece coming together and then yeah it's fun adding all those all those details and just keeping on adding things until you're happy that yeah it doesn't need any more but then sometimes you'll find something in your little stash and you'll go oh that's perfect for that piece um, that actually happened to my I think I showed you I can't remember now with I think I showed you with the beads sitting on it but I found this beautiful very antique um, beaded piece in the Myrtleford op shop and it just happened to sit so beautifully across the bottom of my embroidered um, and slow stitched bird and butterfly and bloom um, glass house for the last prompt and so I've sewn it down the bottom and it just yeah it looks really really lovely and it looks like it was made for the piece and the beaded piece even though it was all sort of curled up in its little bag poor little thing being so treated very poorly in the in the op shop plastic bag that it was in when I stitched it down it all just sat so beautifully and the design um, of the beads is just absolutely gorgeous. I'll see you in a moment. Um, it, hopefully I've got time to just show you what it actually looks like with that, that piece on it. A special little look for you because you've done the time with me on today's video, a little reward for what might have been um, rather boring stitching to watch. Although hopefully it's given you an idea of the different decorative and sort of combining stitches you can do to get pieces of fabric and layers of fabric to coalesce into a single single sort of piece. So I'm happy to be using lots of my fabrics from the reverse art track. I love when I can stop things going to landfill and find productive uses for them and I love bargains. So you can get a lot of fabric, a lot of bang for your fabric buck. Very good. Although I've been, I've not been there since last year. I, <laughs> I planned myself going at the moment because I do just have so many boxes of fabric. I haven't yet banned myself from Melanie's Instagram, which is where I buy my sort of vintage threads and some lovely little vintage bits of fabric um, because she just posts things and they pop up and I see them and I post a sold on them because yeah great value again and just really unique and lovely lovely pieces sorry um Barbara Ann I had gone very quiet there so it's not my recording de device it was my my voice going into my quiet sewing voice I think it is okay might just do a few more stitches around actually let's just use the thread up on this circle because we don't need a short piece of this thread let's make good use of it I do like the variegated threads um probably on this I don't know how much difference you can see in the in the thread color but probably up close you can so I'm thinking soon I should start some projects stitching projects for Easter um, I'm actually very excited about Easter because my brother and sister-in-law and are going to be bringing my two nephews and my niece to Melbourne from Western Australia and we haven't seen them for so many years due to the due to the pandemic um, so it's going to be really lovely to have Easter together and I've taken another another week off when they're here because I want to take the kids around um, to lots of lots of Melbourne sites so hoping to take them out to Werribee Open Plain Zoo, Open Range Zoo, whatever it's called, um, and probably Melbourne Zoo. Last time we went to Healesville, but we could go there again because they were quite young when we went there. Aquarium, I'm sure there'll be desire to go to Lego, Lego Land or Lego World, or if that's still, still going. Um, and yeah, it'll be just nice to have fat, all the all our immediate family together for for Easter so we'll be hosting here so I've been just thinking about what I might do as little little projects for the Easter table so we might have to have another another chat on another video about that 
um, one of the ideas I've got, I'll show you in a moment if I don't totally lose my, my train of thought, which is always a, always a risk with my brain just going, going everywhere when I'm stitching. The relaxed brain just goes off on, on wanders. I feel like we've wandered around the world today, talked travel, food, places stitching probably not much stitching really we've talked a lot more about about travel but I'm almost through this bit of thread so I am going to remember to show you my little project and then to show you the um, the beads or my little project idea and the beading on the, the last Roxy piece so let me just get these final little stitches in sorry even the tables creaking I'm gonna to have to get the WD 40 spray I hate the smell of it though so I have to spray it and then evacuate the room. And this room, whilst it's my craft, I've got my craft table and craft desk and craft storage. It's also my, my work from home room as well. So it doubles as two. But come the end of the day, I shut the computer down and that sits over in the corner and I move over to my, to my crafty desk. Big envy for those that just have a solely solely dedicated um, craft room that doesn't have to double as anything else. Although I actually feel very grateful to have an entirely <laughs> entire room that's just mine to use as, as for my own, own purposes. Should be very grateful for that. But I think we all need a bit of a, a bit of a space that's our own that we can retreat into, have that peaceful time. So I'm just going to tie off this piece here. I'll just put better knot in afterwards. I'll just leave that for now. So that, let's just have a look. We've got our nice circle. Well, one of the Japanese stitching you do circles, but I've forgotten what they're actually called. But I like that. You can definitely see the variegation there with um, the, the changing in colour of thread. So um, I'll keep stitching this in my leisure, or you might may well see me back in a video working on it if I get through some of the the prompts for Roxy Journal of the next Roxy prompts quicker. So one way or another, I will share it with you in a, a future video, but thanks for watching on that. So the little project I'm thinking I might do as part of Easter preparations is I've got some of these um, wooden rolls, like little mini um, bobbins, and it was definitely gonna to be too small for the, the Roxy project. And some of them in fact are even smaller, but I thought I might make some nice little snippet rolls for the Easter table. And I might spell out everyone that's coming's name on it. So we will see, I've got to actually check in the cupboard and just see how many I've got of this size to see if that project's gonna be doable or even if um, I can make it work on the, on the smaller size. So that's one idea. And then, let me find my piece. I've just had to step away from the table. Here it is. The piece that we worked on for the last Roxy Journal of Stitchery prompt of the glass house. And I did my butterfly bird and bloom field glass house. And then this down the bottom is the amazing piece of antique beading that I got from the op shop. And now that it's all stitched down, you can just see the beautiful um, design that's built in to the beading. It all looked a bit like an, a random piece of beading when it was all curled up, but now, um, and I'm not sure how well you can see, again, I probably should have chosen a lighter time to, to do it, but it's just um, glistening so lovely. And it just sits so well with the, with the piece. So I'm just seeing what you can see with that so that's that's it for me today i think thank you again so much for for watching and take care um, thinking of all of you that might be having um challenging times but also hoping for those and very thinking very good wishes for those that are having good times may they continue take care everyone and thanks again